So let's look at the following example. Suppose a 100 meter long wire with a diameter of 2 millimeters is stretched between two walls as shown in the following diagram. A bird then lands at the center of the wire 50 meters from the wall sending a pulse in both directions. So a pulse travels in this direction as well as in this direction. The pulse travels to both ends, reflects, and arrives at the initial position after 0 0.8 seconds. So using that information and assuming the wire is made of copper, we want to determine the tension in the wire. Now, before we begin, let's recall the relationship between the velocity, our tension, and our mass per unit length. So the velocity of our pulse that is moving inside our wire is equal to the square root of the tension in our wire divided by the mass per unit length given by mu. So, we have a bird that lands at the center of the wire and that creates a pulse. Now, what exactly is the total distance that the pulse has to travel? Well, the pulse has to travel a total distance of 100 meters. So, it begins at the center, it travels 50 meters this way and then 50 meters back. So each wave pulse travels a total distance of 100 meters and the time it takes it to travel that distance is given to be 0 0.8 seconds. So that means if we want to find the velocity of our wave inside our wire, we simply take the distance that that wave travels and divide it by the time that has elapsed during that distance. So one. 100 meters divided by 0 0.8 seconds gives us 125 meters per second is the velocity of our pulse inside our copper wire. Now, so we want to solve for the tension in our wire. So that means we take the square of both of these of the left and right side and we bring our mu to the, uh, to the left side of our equation. And we see that the tension in our wire is equal to the product of mu and the square of our velocity. So what exactly is mu? Well, recall that mu is mass divided by length, where mass is the mass of our wire and length is our length of that same wire. Now, what exactly is mass in terms of density and volume? Notice we're not given what the mass is, but we know that mass is equal to the product of density and volume. And since volume is equal to the product of the length and the cross-sectional area of the wire, notice we have the following result. So the L's cancel and we're left with our tension in the wire is equal to the product of our cross-sectional area, our density, and our velocity squared. So we can look up what the density of our copper wire is. It's simply 8.9 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed and our cross-sectional area is given by taking the radius squaring that and multiplying by pi so to get the radius we simply divide this diameter by 2 and divide that by 1000 because we want to convert from millimeters to meters so the cross-sectional area is simply pi times the radius squared now that that quantity is then multiplied by the density, which is multiplied by the square of our velocity of the propagating pulse. So we plug these into the calculator and we get about 433 newtons. So the tension in our wire due to our propagating wave is given by this quantity.